The abuse started immediately. It started before we even got married. Nothing will prepare you for this horrific story of abuse. My father had been raping me. Your father started raping you when you were 15. 20 years, not one member of his family was spared. If you don't know what an odd body experience is, let me tell you, I know what they are. The only thing more shocking than the abuse is what happened after they turned him in. I knew he was going to go after us and kill us. Terrorized by abuse. That's what's coming up right now. I'm on top. Today. You know, we have done a lot of stories on the show about family abuse, but the family that you're about to meet today, I have to say, are just lucky to be alive after enduring the lifetime of horrific abuse that they endured. Three teenage daughters had to make a choice to spare their own lives or that of their abusive father. Well, you take a look at this. They look like two loving parents surrounded by their six happy children. Friends and neighbors envied Walter and Cindy, believing they had the picture-perfect life. But the truth is a far different story. According to his family, Walter was an abusive husband and father who constantly beat his family. While Cindy and the children were the targets of Walter's physical abuse, their oldest daughter, Tori, was treated quite differently. I got whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted it. He constantly was buying me things. I was the only one who got, you know, little gifts and stuff when he came home. So everybody pretty much thought that I was daddy's little princess. But what they didn't know is I was paying a very big consequence for it and doing things that I didn't want to do. The price Tori paid for her father's attention was constant sexual abuse. Tori was forced to keep quiet by Walter's threats. He knew that the love for my family was more important to me than life itself and that I would do anything for them. So when the raping started getting worse, he knew that if he threatened me with the lives of my family, that I would do anything he told me to do. Tori's sexual abuse would also include brutal beatings, particularly when she showed interest in boys. When he found out that I was dating this guy, he just started beating me. The entire left side of my body was just bruised from head to toe. I had shoe prints, little actual bruises of shoe prints on my thighs, his fist and his knuckles and everything were all over my back. Anywhere he could possibly hurt me, he did. But that beating could not prepare Tori or her family for the rage Walter would unleash next. On the night of June 23rd, 2004, while his family was sleeping, Walter woke up his wife and then shot her in the face. He then forced his three oldest daughters, Tori, Wendy, and Crystal, out of bed and drove them to a secluded area where he violently raped each of them. Finally, when Walter fell asleep, the girls, not knowing if their mother was dead or alive, made a decision ensuring their father would never be able to harm them again. Please welcome Tori and her mother, Cindy, to the show, please. I said at the beginning of this to my television audience and, and to everybody here that we've done a lot of shows about family abuse. Some of the things that you all said, every one of you said, is that everybody in the community and everybody around you had one image of what this family was. Mm -hmm. But there was a truth. And what I'm hoping is that some neighbors can wake up and take a look. A month before June 23rd, you went and told your mother what? What did you tell your mother? I went and told my mother that my father had been raping me for the last four years. You were 19 at the time, so your father started raping you when you were 15? 15. And that day, when you told your mother, what did you do? What happened? We were at work. And um, we had just gotten into a big fight that morning, and we weren't doing too good. After lunch, um, my boyfriend came in. At, my boyfriend at the time came in, and um, he made me tell my mom what was going on. And you told her. And I took her back into the treatment room, 
And I told her that dad had been raping me for four years. And immediately your mother did what? I'm gonna ask you in a second. But she sat there for a second. Kind of like, I knew this was happening. I knew this was going on. And she took one look at me, gave me a big hug and a kiss and told me she loved me and that she believed me and then told my boyfriend to take me straight to the hospital to get a rape kit done. And that's because your father raped you the night before? He did. He and did. you still had the same clothing I, I did. I did so not therefore, shower. So therefore, all of the DNA was still there? It was. Which is proof. After that, did you go, you went to the police that day? No, they came to me in the hospital. Okay. All right. And then when the police got there, you told them what happened? Yeah, I And they told. agreed that they were going to arrest your father? Um, because I had physical evidence of abuse on me. Mm -hmm. I had bruises, um, bumps in my head, um, bruises on my body. Your daughter goes to the police that day. You went to the police on your husband 20 years before this, didn't you? 18 yeah. years before this? About 21 years before that. Oh, I don't want you to take me all the way back. This is what happened the month before June 23rd. Right. Let's go back 20 years before June 23rd. Mm -hmm. You met him. I met him. Where'd you meet him at? I met him at a party over at uh, a ranch where we lived. You didn't like him? No, I didn't like him at all. He pursued you or you pursued him? He pursued me. You still didn't like him? Nope. I thought he was a know-it-all and arrogant and um, I just didn't like him. And then all of a sudden, you just ended up together, correct? Right. You stayed with him. Three months later, you got married, did you not? Mm-hmm. The abuse started immediately, did it not? Started before we even got married. What was, the first, what was the first time he hit you? Uh, we were at a park, a uh, river, and he got I don't even remember what he got upset about, but he took me away and um, hit me out by the truck, and then we went back and finished the picnic that day. And I figured, well, I just, I made him mad, you know. I shouldn't have pushed him. He's tired, he just got off work. So I made excuses for it. And this continued and continued until the first time you called the cops, right? Yep. And you called the cops for what? What did he do that? What was, because um, he had beat you, punched you, smacked you, hit you, yelled at you, screamed at you, done everything under the sun, even when you were pregnant, he pushed you out of a car, out correct? Out of a truck, uh-huh. Out of a truck? A diesel truck, yeah. You still didn't call the police? When was the first time you called the police on him? Um, Tori was a year old when I called the police. He had just come back from on the road. He was a truck driver. And um, I was just tired of it. I was tired. I was pregnant again. And um, she was a demanding baby. And um, he came home and he wanted this and wanted to know why this wasn't ready and why this wasn't done. And I was just tired of it. So I yelled back at him. And then he, um, his friend was with him, so I figured it was pretty safe because he had a friend with him. And um, I told him just to leave me alone to back off. And he just started pushing me, hitting me, and I got tired of it and um, picked up the high chair and threw it at him, which really set him off. So I grabbed the baby and went running outside uh, down the road to a firehouse and banged on the door. Police came? Yeah, because there was blood on, I had blood on me and I had welts on me. So the police came and arrested him. And did you think that night that it was going to stop? No, because he never saw the inside of a jail even that night. So this night, the police come to arrest him with evidence, clear and simple evidence, that he has been raping and beating his own child. The police come 20 years before this on a night and realize he is beating his wife and they have enough evidence to put him in jail and they don't do anything then. We'll take a break, we'll be back right after this. Well, I was 15 when you first raped me. The abuse happened to me a minimum of three times a week Every single week. You're talking for about being raped years. three times a week. Oh, yeah. Every week. Oh, yeah. For four years. Four years. You heard a second gunshot? Yes. What did you think happened then? I thought my mom died. Can I characterize the next 20 years of your life with this man as being what? Living hell? What do you call No, no. No. As bad as he was, he was good, too. You can say that, 
But I'm going to tell you, your process isn't even close to done if you think that. But go ahead. There were good times. There correct? were good times. Uh -huh. he, there were good times. Those good times were also shadowed by bad times. Correct. Yep. There were beatings. Yes. Some bad beatings. M multiple beatings. Yes. Beatings on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. Sometimes beatings in one week that were multiple times in a week. Yes, there were. You saw all these beatings. I saw a couple the of them. A yes. lot of them. Yeah. A lot of times you know for a fact that she took beatings to keep you guys from getting beat. Most all the time she did. Am I lying, Mom? No, it was very easy. Um, I guess women in my situation, they do. It, it's okay for the husband to beat you, but don't touch my kids. And I was always that way. These were my babies. My six kids are my babies. So instead of beating them, come beat me. That's right. So all I would have to do is get in his face, step right in between him. The just way you look me in the face yeah. one more time, Cindy. I <laughs> asked you a question five minutes ago, and I said, would you characterize that 20 years as living hell? And you said, no, there were good times. Well, there were good times in between the bad times. There were. We I couldn't, I would not be able to discern a good time if someone even beat me. But I get it. Because I didn't live that. I get it. I get it. I am not an abused woman. I don't think I will ever understand I have compassion for and I'm trying, and I'm trying to stop another woman from being in your position, I'm telling you. You saw signs, and I'm gonna go back, and this is not a judgmental call. There were times that you said, mm, Walter's being really inappropriate with Tori. Correct. And I would go to him, and I would confront him with it. Mm -hmm. And he beat you for, for asking a question. Yes, he would. Walt had so much power over everybody and over the situation that, um, he had control over everything. Everybody thought he was the perfect, the perfect provider. And everybody in the community looked at you guys That's as being right. the perfect family, correct? That's right. They did. Mom says she asked him questions. When was the first time he raped you? First time he raped me? Oh, I was 15 when he first raped me. Um, we, we were out back behind the house. And he had already started grooming you. Oh, yeah. Say, now you can look back at it and understand the term. He had already started grooming you and preparing you for this day anyway, correct? Oh, yeah. Because he started off by feeling you, touching you, inappropriate touching, molesting you, let's yes. use the right term. Yes. And but he would say things like, well, you owe this to me because I did this for you. Or I deserve this. Or if you don't keep your word, then, then you're nothing. Because a man is only as good as his word. Well, yes it is, but not in a situation like this. I knew it was wrong. I didn't want to do it. But he made me feel bad. He made me feel like I was worthless. You know, there was a period of time after this that your siblings all, and each one of them is, no, not each one, I take that back. Two have made comments that made, made it sound like, well, they thought during this period of time that whatever was going on between you and your dad was consensual. And I say this only because, not to say something against your sisters, but to say that people who don't understand this kind of abuse, this systematic torture, systematic brainwashing, this form of abuse, don't understand what a child at 15 and 16 has to go through when she's being told that I'm gonna kill everybody else in his family and make you watch. And let me show you what I can do, is I'll go beat the crap out of your mother right now. Walk away from her and go beat her up and come back. What else were you disposed to think, correct? I, I was pretty much at the mercy of him. Whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted it. The abuse happened to me a minimum of three times a week, every single week You're talking for about being years. raped three times a week. Oh, yeah. Every week oh, yeah. for four years. Four years, a minimum of three times a week. And any time you put up a fight, beaten for it, correct? Oh yeah, I got played Russian roulette with all the time. He'd take his little 357 handgun, stick a bullet in it, close his eyes, take the chamber out, spin it, close it, put it up to his head and pull the trigger, put it up to my head and pull the trigger, until he felt it was necessary for him to stop. If you don't know what an odd body experience is, let me tell you, I know what they are. Four years, Mom. I know. What did you see? What could you, you were not home during I knew. the sex acts. Sometimes she was. 
How do you get away with this in a house full of people? Oh, when the kids, when it was just us kids home, he would send the kids outside to go pick up imaginary trash that wasn't even in the yard. Um, he'd send some of the kids down to the neighbor's house, and then um, he would take me into the bedroom, lock the bedroom doors, shut all the windows, shut all the blinds, lock the bathroom doors, and I could not say or do a thing about it. If I did, <laughs> It was all over. I was dying inside, literally, honestly dying inside. Stopped eating? I stopped eating. I started throwing up. I'd take aspirin, handfuls of aspirin a day just to make myself throw up so I would not have to go to the gym with him. Because I knew after the gym, I'd be raped. I'd be beat. I'd be played Russian roulette with. I'd have my family's safety thrown in my face. And he knew, he knew I would do anything to not put them in harm's and when way. When you say family safety, he told you, I will kill your sister. Yes, he I said, I will kill your mother. I will start I with will your start, mother. I will rape your sister. You had 13, at that time, what, they were 13, 15, 16? Yeah. Like well, he did it all the way up until the day he died, the day he was killed. Let me take a break. We'll be back right after this. June 23rd, you woke up to what? Getting hit in the face with a crowbar. He took the crowbar and smashed it across the left side of my face, smashed it completely in, and it stood me straight out of bed. So let's go back to that month before June 23rd. I think the picture's painted. You go and you tell your mom this, and you knew. What went through your mind? You knew she's going to the hospital She's going to allege that her father's been raping her, and there's enough evidence. That's right. So what did you do that day, that moment? What did you, you it must have jumped um, out like a I knew. Actually, light. I kind of felt relieved because I knew. Mm -hmm. And I finally had, I had gone to the cops before and asked, what if he's doing this? What if this is happening? They're like, oh, Cindy, are you kidding, Walt? No. You guys are, are too good of people. It's not going to happen. So when she told me, I felt relief. I sent her to the hospital. And I figured I was going to continue working, finish my shift. But after about 10 minutes, I knew I couldn't finish the shift. Told them I had to go. I got in the car, um, went home, got my kids, grabbed a bag of guns, um, grabbed Let's some talk food. Talk about guns. You, you had multiple guns in your house. Oh, he's an avid hunter. Avid hunter, plenty of guns. Oh boy. So you knew I had you wait because stop. You left work. You went and got your kids got guns and things and got them out of the house because you knew what was going to happen. I knew he was going to go after us and kill us. You told the police this. I told the police that. I went. You told the police this. The number of threats he made, correct? They sent a SWAT team by yep, they to get him because the police were so prepared for carnage, right? They sent a SWAT team, threw grenades in the house, yep. set the house on fire. Smoke bombs. Yep. Smoke bombs. bombs. And they tore the big house. Big old SWAT apart. team. Yeah. He got away. Piece of glass. I told broke. him he'd get away too. And you told them. You told them before they even showed up the house. Right. He's going to get away. Be prepared. He got away. He had night vision stuff. I told him he'd get away. And not only did he get away, but he stayed right there and he watched us. Out the back door. Walked out the back door. And hung out in the weeds. And hung out in the weeds barefoot. Mm -hmm. He was barefoot, and they had the entire SWAT team there. Couldn't chase him down. You even oh, no. told them, you okay. even told them, I see his eyes out there in the field. Yes, I did, because I went to go check on the horses, because my daughter had asked about her animals, so I went to make sure they were okay. And when I was scanning the flashlight, I saw his eyes in, in, and I started screaming, he's out there. And they came and told me, no, this is a secured area, you're fine. So let's talk about this man's control. You ended up calling, though. You called him on the phone. I called him the next morning, because I knew the police weren't going to be able to get him, and I told him, you know, I don't know why Tori's saying this, but um, I love you. We can get through this together. I told him, do you really think that they're going to believe that you did something like this, Walt? Look at you. Look at what we do in the community. I talked to him three or four times on the phone that day, and I told him, I love you. Um, I prove my love to you by staying with you. I will stand by you. It will be easier on you if you turn yourself in than if they find you, Walt. And you were doing that not because you were trying to stay by him, but because oh, you wanted no. to get him off the street, correct? So when you get him in, you thought the cops would keep him. 
I figured they'd No, wait, listen to me. Here's a man that they had to use a SWAT team to go to the house to get him out, okay? He eludes a SWAT team. They know he's got guns, weapons, and nah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. They let him out on bail. And then let him come to the house to get his stuff. Yes, they did. But some of the stuff they let him take with him was what? Guns. His guns. <laughs> June 23rd, you woke up to what? Getting hit in the face with a crowbar. He took the crowbar and smashed it across the left side of my face, smashed it completely in, and it stood me straight out of bed. Straight out of bed. He then went through the house and systematically woke up your siblings, correct? Yes, he did. You, your sister, which, which sister? Jamie. Jamie. Jamie and I share a room. So he woke up Jamie? He, he hit her also. He woke up Jamie and I. No, he did not hit Jamie. He sat on the bed next to Jamie and told her, Daddy loves you. He will always love you. You will always be Daddy's little angel. And handcuffed her to her bed and took me out into the living room. He went and got your other sister, Crystal. He got my, my younger two sisters, Crystal Wendy, and Wendy, Crystal. out of bed, put us to... And all. did he wake them, similar, wake them similarly to the way he Yeah, looking? he hit my sister, one of my sisters in the stomach with a crowbar. <clears throat> and he woke your and youngest sister up. he woke up. the youngest one up by headbutting her. He comes by the house. He made the three of you, and they left your one sister, again, Jamie, handcuffed to the handcuffed bed. Handcuffed to her bed. Takes the three of you in the living room, but he says, this, what does he, how does he make you go in the living room? He says, get your ass up, you're going to the living room. And then? So we got up and went to the living room. He went in to check on my mom. He had a gun, he had a crowbar. The man you could smell the entire house smelled Hold of on. alcohol. He comes in to see you, you're laying in bed. Yeah, he came into my room first at about 2.30 in the morning and um, woke me up. How? Um, he hit me. With a crowbar? No, he hit me with his fist. Mm -hmm. And because my son was in bed with me, um, my youngest son's room was destroyed in the fire. So he was sleeping in, in bed with me and he wanted to be quiet so I didn't wake him up. He um, took me by the throat and pushed me up against the wall. Um, he did hit me with a crowbar over the head. He took me around to my rocking chair and um, handcuffed me there. Too. He kept putting the the um, gun, gun up, underneath. In, up underneath my chin, in my ear. My son woke up at that time because he heard, because I was begging him to please be quiet. And um, little Walter woke up and um, he took the gun out of my head countless number of times and said, Dad, please, you know, don't do it, Dad, please, please. And then he said, if, if you make any noise, then I'm, I'm gonna shoot Walter right in front of you. And so uh, at that point in time, I knew I had to do absolutely anything because I didn't want any of my kids. I knew we were in trouble and... Okay, well, he left the room. That's when he went and woke them up. That's right. But did he not then tell the three of you to get naked? He did. He told us that we better have our clothes off, everything off by the time he got back. Let me take a break. We'll be back right after this. and he ran into the bedroom and that's when we heard a second shot and a second scream and almost like a gurgling sound. And that second shot came from him shooting you right in the face. Yes. My dad came in and stood over me and hit me over the head with a crowbar like this and it went straight across the side of my face and just smashed this entire side of my face in. It was completely gone. There was no um, features in the side of my face anymore. Please welcome Crystal and Wendy to the show. Welcome them both. You both have been backstage listening to this, correct? You've heard everything that's been said, right? I want to back up for a second before we pick up on what happened in that living room and on, okay? When you were 13, you're how, old, how old are you right now? 17. When you were 13, your dad raped you, did he not? Yeah. You told people about that, right? How many people do you think you told them? Um, first I told the whole family, and 
they turned their backs on me. And then, um, so I turned to somebody outside the family, my, rest, my friends. And nothing happened? Um, actually, one of my friends' parents um, went to the police and confronted Tori at school about it. And um, she denied it, and I got in big trouble for that. Why didn't, when she came to you? Now, this, was he, he had already been abusing you then? Listen to me, Tori. I'm not asking the why to accuse you. I'm just asking why. Now you had confirmation. This confirmation, you got another person who's been abused too. Because Crystal had been a known liar in the family. She was... But you knew she wasn't lying. A compulsive liar. But for the things that she had lied to us about in the past, why would I believe that he was doing the same thing to her. Wait a minute, he's abusing you. No one would believe you. I didn't say anything to anybody. Okay, but even though he's abusing you, would you not know he's capable of that? Or at that point in time, you still thought, mm, mm I didn't think that he would abuse Crystal at all, at all. Why, he was beating my mom, raping me. What else did he need? On multiple occasions, you saw a lot of things, did you not? Yeah. You saw your mom being beaten? Yeah. You called about your mom being beaten? Yeah. You saw your sister being raped? Yeah. There were times that you went in, woke up Wendy, and said, Wendy, come see this to see if I'm seeing the right thing. Did you not? Yes. And at this time, how old are you, darling? 13? Right now. No, then. 13? 13. 13, your sister calls you and says, come take a look at this. What do you think you saw? I saw exactly what she saw, but I denied it. There were, there were points in time, just, just hear me again, because I want all of you, all four of you, to stop for a second. Do you think you're the only family this has ever happened to? Oh, no. Of course not. Do you? No. Do you think this could be going on right now? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. definitely going on right now. Okay, then, then that's why I'm asking some of the questions that I'm asking. Because there's another 13-year-old girl home right now who's sitting there at the television looking at you and saying to herself, see, I'm right. I shouldn't do anything. Because what I thought I saw, maybe I didn't see. And abuse is taking place in their home. Along the way, I don't understand. you got to understand this. These children see this. They see her get beat. They know that no one's going to come to help. Every attempt at getting help, no one's done it. So who's going to help you? We had to help ourselves. Let me take a little break. We'll be back right after this. That night, June 23rd, Wendy, you must have been... I, I, like at your wit's end, right? You, you, they had no... Why did he wake me up, right? What was going through your mind? Um, when he first woke me up, I didn't think anything of it. Like, it didn't hit me until I was out in the hall that he wasn't supposed to be there because we'd been woken up so many times before that. That he was arrested and told to stay away from the family. So you didn't expect him to be there because up to this point, you didn't believe that there was any abuse going on in your home, did you not? Sort of. Sort of, kind of, just didn't... I, I knew it was there, but I didn't want it to be there, so I would deny it because I wanted to be perfect. Even, even from the standpoint, not just the physical abuse of your mother, the beatings, but the sexual abuse, too. You denied that also, right? So this night, your father says, get your you-know-what in that living room and take your clothes off. What did you think your father was going to do? What did you think? Well... Before he, when I first realized that he wasn't supposed to be there, I was standing by the bathroom. And I remember him hitting me in the face with something. I don't remember what, but, and then I heard someone say, hey. And then he told us to get into the living room area. And we did what he said. And then the next thing I know, he's telling us to take off our clothes. So I waited just to see if the girls were going to do it. Because I wasn't sure if he was serious or not. And then they started taking off their clothes. So at that point, I was... What else do you do? 
Crystal, what did you think at this moment? Um, How did he wake you? My brother ran in, and I heard him say my name, and I woke up, and my dad came in and hit me in the stomach with the crowbar. I got out of bed, and he hit me again, and then he told us to go out in the living room, and we went out there and told us to take our clothes off, and I knew, I knew something was going to happen. I knew it was something. Why, why are you thinking that? You were in the bedroom doing what, Mom? You broke the chair? <laughs> I broke my favorite rocking chair. Yes, I did. Reach into the closet for what? Um, I got a gun. I had a gun. So I um, was trying to get the gun loaded. Um, you're nervous. You're shaking. You're shaking. I couldn't you're even nervous. load the gun. That's right. Mm, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? He could come in. Um, but what was, and what do you guys think the worst thing could happen? She's got a gun now. She's got a way to do this, right? She can bring this to an end. While she's loading the gun, ah, you hit the trigger. My gun went off. It, it misfired. He'd been reloading his own bullets. Wait, it had hot you, loads in there. Hot loads. And you all in the living room, you hear a gun go off. Your dad had come back in the living room after he just beat your mom. He didn't know that, but he, he came back in the living room. What did he do when he heard a gunshot? No, he went back in to check on my mom, and she had sat back down really quick and made it seem like she was still handcuffed to the chair. He came back out. And he was criticizing um, all of our bodies, criticizing us. And then that's when you heard the gunshot. And that's when we heard the gunshot go off in a loud, shrilling scream. Because he left you then. And then he turned around and he's like, don't you move. And he turned around and he ran into the bedroom. And that's when we heard a second shot and a second scream and almost like a gurgling sound. And that second shot came from him shooting you right in the face. Yes. Let me take a break. We'll be back right after this. He's told you to take off your clothes. You're standing there. You hear the shot and this blood-curdling scream come out of your mom's room. What are you thinking? My mom's dead. You killed her? She's dead. You knew your brother was in that room too, dead. though, right? Please welcome Jamie to the show. <laughs> Sister number four, and, and, and I, I can't imagine, you didn't wake up when your father came in the room and hit Tori, right? You didn't wake up from that. Oh, I was already awake. You were already awake? Yeah, he woke me up first. Oh, I thought he woke you up second. No, I, he woke me up first. And I mean, when he woke you up, he kissed you, said he loved you, and then he handcuffed he you to a bed? He woke me up, and... He had, he was like, I sat up and I was, you know, I was like, my dad's there, you know, I was happy to see my dad, then I realized, you know, he's not supposed to be there. So I sat up in my bed and I was, you know, I was thinking this to myself and then he, then I tried, I tried to talk to him. I was like, you know, daddy, I love you. I, you know, don't do anything, please. And he went over and woke Tori up. I didn't know how he woke Tori up. I just knew he woke her up, woke her up. Um, he told me to be quiet, because then I started calling for my mom. He's like, Jamie, if you don't shut up, I'm going to kill you. And so I just, I was being quiet. And then he told Tori to get up, and he, then he took me and handcuffed me to my bed. Stop right there. Yeah. What are you thinking, Jamie? I don't know what to think. Your sister's I, bleeding, right? I, I didn't see. I couldn't see. But he, really. he as he's handcuffing you, he's telling her to get in the, you know yeah. what, into the yeah, living room. Yeah, I never really seen her face. Just when she first sat up, I seen her face. I didn't see blood. I could, you know, I'd, and if I did, I don't remember. Um, he told them to go to the living room, and he leaves you handcuffed. Yep. Hands, both hands? No, nope, just, hand. just one hand down to the, the bed frame, just like this. To the bed frame? Yeah. He... You hear the yelling in the living room, right? Yes. Could you hear it? Yes. I, he told my little brother to go get my sisters, and then he, when, right before he did that, he gave me a kiss on the head, and he told me that no one loves me more than the whole world, and he did. And he walked out of the room and turned off the light. Next thing you hear, a gunshot, did you not? Yes. I heard him yelling at my sisters, and then I heard a gunshot. And I, I didn't know because I was in my room. I couldn't see anything. So you I... You heard one gunshot? I then heard one gunshot. you heard a gunshot. second gunshot? Yes. When I heard one gunshot... When I heard the gunshot, my dad took off running. Tori threw a phone in my room and told me to t call the cops. And I tried to call the cops, and the phones were broke. He 
broke all the phones. Cut all the phone lines. Cut all the phone lines. Every single yeah. phone line in the house he and cut. And then I threw the phone out of the room because I didn't want him to see that I had it in there because I didn't know if he was going to come back in. And like... But right at that moment when he ran and Tori threw the phone in, you heard a second gunshot. Yes. What did you think happened then? I thought my mom died. Let me take a break. We'll be back right after this. I am almost out of time on the show. Please welcome the director of the Monta Williams Aftercare Program, Dr. Alicia Saucer. Welcome her to the show. Doc, you know, I tell you, very seldom on the show, and um, for you, very seldom on the show, in the, in the 14 years that you've seen me do it, do I ever stop my show and say, guess what? I'm gonna make you wait till tomorrow to find out what happened. In a community, six girls, two boys? Two boys. I'm sorry, four girls, two boys. Four girls, two boys, six kids. They have this picture-perfect exterior, but I can't imagine not knowing that something odd was going on, especially when one child goes to the authorities and says an allegation, and a couple years later some weird things are happening. How can we as community members be more vigilant to see these kinds of things, to stop this, or make the phone call, the 911 call, call to protect people? What should we be looking for? The real question is why we don't, and that's something that I think everybody here in the audience and us included should really ask ourselves. When we've seen things like this and we had an opportunity to act, why didn't we? And to examine that in ourselves so that next time maybe we do act. Maybe this guy was so much a member of his community that everybody knew him and everybody feared the repercussions if they commented on it. But I don't believe they feared him. I believe they just thought he couldn't possibly do this, correct? Well, some people, some people knew his temper, so they didn't want to upset him. These people all sat down with police officers and said, this man is going to kill us. You don't understand it. He's got guns. He will do the following. And they still let him out of jail? And then they let him go by his house and pick up his guns? Well, why would people have faith in the system now? Once they hear our story, the system failed us. Why wouldn't it fail you? But you know what? The system doesn't have to fail you because we've already reached out through our lawyers here at the show. And I, I'm, I'm, I asked the question and was absolutely taken aback when I found out you ain't suing nobody. Excuse my mouth. Nobody say wants to take on our case. Well, guess what? Somebody does. And I've got... Uh, can I say his name on there? All right. Uh, it's attorney Robert T. Eglett of Maynard Eglett Cottle in Las Vegas. Okay? He is willing to take on your case pro bono. <laughs> and the way this family is struggling, you've run out of funds now for, for after therapy yourself, correct? We've run out of funds. You guys know that when your father came to the house that night, I guess you know this now in hindsight, that he wrote several suicide notes. You knew that, right? Yeah. You all knew that, that he wrote several suicide notes. One of them was to you. Yes. And the suicide note that he wrote was, Tori, I never meant to cause you any pain or heartache. I never wanted to do anything other than just love you. I'm sorry I just could not have anyone take you away from me. I love you more than my own. I don't understand that because you were his own. I loved you more than my own. Please forgive me. I'm going to rot in hell for loving you so much. Now, if there was any question as to what this father was doing and how he felt about what he was doing, that's an answer and an omission right there. I haven't done this in the 14 years I've done the show. I'm not ended the show and not told you what happened. But I'm going to do that today because I want you to come back tomorrow. These ladies have way too much to say, and there's too many other families out there that can be helped by what they have to say. And so join us tomorrow for the conclusion of what I'm going to call one of the most horrific cases of family abuse that we've ever done. You need to, you need to join us tomorrow because Tori did make a statement. Family and sisters pulled together. I will tell you this that Walter's no longer here because these sisters pulled together. And you'll find out, find out why tomorrow. Join us in the next Montel.